So I was coaching one of my clients yesterday, guys, on the weekend program. Uh, he's a great guy, man, young guy, you know, really, really motivated, uh, very intelligent. And uh, we were coming towards the end uh, of the program, and we was in, um, we was in Cafe Royale having a coffee, just celebrating, because it was, it was a, it's, a, it's tough, you know. I always appreciate the, these guys going through the program, because it's not, it's not an easy program to do mentally and emotionally, it's very challenging. So he asked me, um, could I do a video and explain um, how I overcame my anxiety? You know, what were the things that I'd done? What were the things that were most effective? And uh, it's a pleasure for me to talk about that because this is something that I'm really proud of myself and, and I enjoy talking about it and going over it and going back in time. Especially um, knowing that it's gonna help a lot of people, which it will. So, you know, for me, I was thinking about this today because it's, 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 I could get straight to the point, but I might leave important bits out. I, I, I've got to start off by going back to the beginning. So I won't go right to the beginning, you know, but I'll go to a, an important part. And I was in my early 20s, I was living in Fulham Broadway. I was living in like, it's a nice area, but I was living in a really small apartment. It was a shoebox. And I was going through the worst time with my anxiety this time. This is when I was having panic attacks every morning. I was depressed. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't feel comfortable around people. I was very paranoid. And I was struggling badly, you know. And I, I even wrote this down. I was struggling because I, um, the anxiety attacks. But what was really getting to me was these, these main areas that are personal to me. And I didn't have any money. I didn't have the confidence to make money. I wasn't employed. And I didn't have a girlfriend. And those two, those two areas were just killing me. They were making me feel ashamed. They were making me feel terrible about myself. And I wasn't successful in my life. And that was really getting to me. So it was like, I'm not successful. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a date in life. Can't speak to women. And I haven't got any money. I'm struggling, you know, um, with money. I'm on benefits. I just felt so ashamed of myself. I felt like I was a failure. And I was afraid that things wouldn't change for me. That was one of my biggest fears, that it was going to stay the same forever. So it got to a point where I was with a friend basically and he had this book um, and he said to me, you should read this book, it's amazing. Uh, it's an author called Les Brown, it was about motivation. I'll be honest, at the time guys, I was a bit defensive. I wasn't interested in it, so I dismissed it. Right? I was kind of like, okay, cool, if it's helping my friend. But I don't know what motivated me at some point. I was at home and these were the days kind of like when YouTube was quite new, right? It was just kind of coming on the scene. And at that time, I had a cheap phone. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to this. Uh, I was on a pay-as-you-go phone, so I didn't have unlimited credit or internet access, but I had a little bit of credit, and I was able to access YouTube, you know, back in the day where it would come up, it would load slowly. And I typed in Les Brown, and I found one of his videos, and I played it. And in the, in the video, when he told his story, it made me cry. I think it made me cry because... A lot of the things he said I was going through and I was feeling, you know, especially, you know, the feeling that you're dumb, that, you know, you got, I got bullied at school, I got laughed at school, I got teased, and I felt like a failure my whole life. And uh, he spoke about his story, about how he was adopted and he lived in an abandoned building and he was called the dumb one at school and people laughed at him and one day he met a school teacher and the school teacher said, you know, Les, can you come to the front of the board and solve this equation? And he said, I can't do that, sir. And the teacher said, why can't you do that? And he said, I can't do it. And the kid shouted out, well, he's DT. And, and the teacher said, what's DT? And, and the kid said, he's the dumb twin. You know, he's, he's got a clever twin. He's the dumb one. And I think I identified with that growing up in school because I felt dumb um, in the school system, you know, because I didn't really, I didn't enjoy school. And a lot of the subjects that were taught, I didn't enjoy them. And I struggled with anxiety. I was, so, I was socially awkward, nervous. I got laughed at, teased. So I think that part of his story got my attention. It wasn't just the words that Les Brown said, because anyone can say these words. It was the energy behind his words. It was the truth. I could, I could feel, I could feel it. I really could. And then he said some affirmations, and I think these were the ones that made me cry. He said, you know, in his great voice, he said, "It's possible. It's possible. You can live your dreams. It's possible." And he said it like four times, and just the, the whole, the kind of. The, the sort of um, enthusiasm from those words really spoke to my heart and it just, I just started crying. And then he said, you can live your dreams. And then he, he said another thing that really got to me in a good way, failure equals success. And he said, you will fail your way to success. I can't do his voice, but he said it. And when he said that word, 
I honestly felt like something inside me, it sounds cheesy and people always say this on YouTube and have these experiences, something inside me changed. Obviously, there was a lot of work to be done, but something in me changed forever. And I can explain, I made a commitment to myself. I made a commitment to myself in full and Broadway in my lowest time of my life or that time that I'm gonna face every fear that frightens me. I don't care what people think, what they're gonna say about me, what is gonna be exposed, which I'm nervous, I'm awkward, I'm you know uncomfortable around most people. I'm gonna face that. And I'm not gonna stop facing it until I become successful in my life. And listening to Les Brown brought me to that conclusion. And at that time, I was looking for answers, you know. Um, obviously, thankfully, I had a good um, family, but I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to say everything to my family. So I started to pray, you know, I was praying to God, I was, I was praying to Jesus Christ, please help me. I was just in, I was in agony, I, I was dying to change my life. I just wanted to take away those feelings of shame and this horrible feeling of emptiness that I'm not good enough, the fear, the loneliness, the, just the sadness, the sorrow, I just had enough of it. So he went on to say that, you know, success isn't easy. It's not a quick fix. It's not an overnight thing. People are going to doubt you. You're not going to be successful straight away with meeting the right woman, getting over your anxieties, making money, becoming financially free, being successful, f living your purpose. But that, that made me feel better because my whole life, I, I believe that you, you either you're successful or you're not. Like as soon as I make any mistake, that's because I'm not good enough. So if I stutter, if I get awkward, if I get rejected by a girl, if um, you know my family get upset with me, or if I have an argument with a friend, it's like I'm, it's like it's all my fault. There's no turning back, and and the, the rejection, the failure that that is um, that I'm responsible for is permanent. I can't turn it around. So if one girl rejects me, all women reject me. If a business fails, all business fails. Of course, that's not true. Now I know that. I've proved that to be untrue. So when Les Brown said, basically, when he gave me the permission that I needed, I needed the approval from someone else. I needed psychological relief. I needed someone to make me feel not ashamed of who I was, what I was, and the mistakes that I, could, that I made in the past and what I'd inevitably make going forward. And when he said, your failure way to success, I was like, it's okay for me to fail. You know, if I go out and get turned down by 20 women, that's fine as long as I don't quit. And he said that, as long as you don't quit, and he, and he said, you need to be hungry. You need to have the hunger. And I was hungry. I was so hungry to succeed because I've been in pain all my life. I've been dealing with this all my life privately. Uh, this is something I didn't share with. No one knew this about me. My mum knew a little bit. My dad knew. They, knew. they knew quite a lot, but they didn't know all of it. No one knew what I was going through. I knew what I was dealing with. I was in agony for so many years. I was suffering with, an, with this anxiety disorder and depression, low self-esteem and trauma and fears and insecurities and all these things that were just keeping me in a mental prison. So after that, I knew the areas where I needed to face. The first area was the boxing gym and weight training. I wanted to, I wanted to feel a healthy level of masculinity. I want to feel like a man, like, like I... Uh, sorry, it always happens, doesn't it, when you're um, when you're doing a video, someone um, will call. Right, so, um, oh, what was my point? I was my train of thought. So, yeah, I wanted to feel, you know, I wanted to feel like a man. I wanted to get my confidence up. So, I went to the boxing gym and I was nervous as hell. Um, that, that took me quite a few attempts to get over that fear. I had to, actually went to the weightlifting gym first. Psychologically, I think I was preparing myself, but I got a lot out of the weight training, inspired by Bruce Lee, Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Van Damme, you know, all, all of the kind of the heroes that most of us grew up with. That gave me some confidence. Uh, I still wasn't fully confident, and that exposure helped me it, it basically helped me to show me why I was so afraid of people and life and coming outside of my comfort zone. I was afraid of anxiety. I was afraid of my own emotions and the feelings of anxiety. So going to the gyms, 
triggered those feelings, brought them up and enabled me to expose myself to them and start to get used to those feelings and to be able to communicate, cooperate and perform under um, those stressful um, feelings and circumstances. So boxing toughened me up in the right way. And it actually took me off the streets. It stopped me from going down a negative path of drugs, drug dealing, fighting and negativity. And I actually stopped getting into fights with people because I, I used to get into a lot of fights because I got bullied all the time. I was paranoid and I would react out of fear of being humiliated and, and beaten up and stuff. So boxing um, gave me confidence, taught me self-defense and gave me discipline and structure. The confidence that I got from the boxing and the weight training eventually transpired and gave me the confidence to make new male friends. And obviously I made friends with Floyd um, and I got lots of confidence from the friendship um, mainly with women because I couldn't speak to women at that point not without stuttering I had no confidence and Floyd gave me a lot of confidence and belief and being around someone um, you know who was respectful with women and confident and charming and it rubbed off so I then progressed on to practicing talking to women and at the start um, I was really really awkward like I tried my best to hide the fear but it was at a point where I couldn't really hide it. I tried to hide it from them. And I'd freeze up, I'd start, I'd get nervous, I'd panic, you know, when they'd look at me. I struggled with eye contact and I struggled to speak clearly, get my voice out. Uh, so yeah, I practiced talking to women. And for me, I, I had to get, um, I just had to learn to relax, basically. I had to go through the anxiety. And over time, it got easier. I got more confident and I could relax and eventually you know, I started to get, um, I started to go on dates and I was petrified going on dates and I just kept putting myself for it. The one tip I can give people that helped me and it helped me to have self-esteem when I didn't really have much. One thing about me was, and it's important that you guys can figure this out for yourself, it's really important. Despite having low self-esteem at that time, I had a lot of courage, I wouldn't give up even though I'd feel like giving up and I'd have self-doubt and a lot of insecurities and I had that as a kid, luckily. And that carried me, through, that carried me, me through until I did start to build self-esteem as a consequence of getting more confident and comfortable around people, women and life. So that's something that I'd done that helped me. And after I started getting confident with women, that's when I started to go and meet people in general. And I went to meet-up groups um, self-improvement ones, business ones, dating ones, all different types, improvisation. And that exposure to people and the different situations, all these things built me. So to answer your question further, I can't say to you the one thing that changed me. It was a combination of many things. But what I can tell you is, it was all the same principle. I faced my fear and kept doing it. I was very consistent. Something that I remind all my clients to be, because I knew at some point, if I don't keep doing this, and building this habit, I'm going to recluse back to the way, I, the way I am, which is not social, anxious, awkward, stressed, paranoid, insecure, and, and doubting myself. So the more I did it, the better I got. And the more I faced it, despite it being difficult every single day, every week, every month, it did get easier. And I would explain it like this. So the anxiety and the fear never completely went away, and it never completely goes. But where my anxiety used to be here, if you can see that, and my confidence and self-esteem and my mental strength was down the toilet here. Over time, it went like that. So my confidence went up and my anxiety went down. So the more confidence I gained, the more self-esteem, the more uh, relaxation around people and the more I healed emotionally and mentally, the lower the anxiety got. And if the anxiety ever spiked and jumped up and got triggered, my confidence and my strength could control it and keep it at a certain healthy level. And that's when you know you're improving and you're growing. So I just went from strength to strength. Like I said, it was almost like a piece of a puzzle or do you call it a domino effect? So going to the weightlifting gym gave me the confidence to go to boxing. Doing the amateur boxing gave me the confidence to speak to women and make more male friends. Speaking to women, going on dates with women and eventually getting a girlfriend gave me the confidence to start a business. Starting a business and teaching people one-on-one -on -one gave me the confidence to teach in groups. Um, Teaching people in groups gave me the confidence to then go and do public speaking in front of larger groups. Doing public speaking and speaking in front of larger groups gave me the confidence to go on interview shows, radio shows, and to get more comfortable in front of the camera and do all these YouTube videos. 
And then eventually, you know, that later on gave me the confidence to address, you know, um, issues I had with family, you know, things from the past that we all deal with, to confront family about certain things that I weren't happy with and talk about it and, and get things out and, and improve the relationships or at least to have the courage to open, open these conversations up, things that, that bothered me. So, you know, it was a combination of all these things. Now, eventually, after doing that for 18 months, I achieved all my dreams to which I first set out when I heard Les Brown's story. And my personal goals and dreams was get a girlfriend, fall in love, become successful at something in life and, and within that goal, something that wouldn't just benefit me, but would benefit many other people. That I always felt that in my heart. And to also become more confident and do public speaking. So I achieved all those things before my 30th birthday. I would say I was about 29 and a half when I made it. So it really was unbelievable to be at a point where I was sort of 25, 24, just broken, no confidence, and then a couple of years later, to, to become successful. But obviously, some of you guys know that's not where my story ends. There's a second chapter, and we'll get into that in another video when that's relevant to talk on that more, because I had another challenge with the mental health breakdown after succeeding and being successful, crumbling down again and then building back up. So what I would say was it was a combination of all those things. I can't really say to you, well, the boxing was the best or the weightlifting, or speaking to women, or public, they were all good. They all facilitated one another. And I honestly believe if you took anything out of my story or a piece of it, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have um, achieved all those things. So I'm not saying that you've got to copy me. I'm not saying that at all. And maybe that wouldn't be right for your journey. Everyone's on their own journey. But what I would say, and what I, I know to be true from experience, you've still got to do in principle, what I did, and what I did was, very simply, I faced my fears in reality, because I found books don't work. I tried reading books on motivation, anxiety, relationships. It doesn't take away the anxiety. It doesn't heal the trauma alone. Now, maybe for some people it does. For me, it didn't work. It doesn't work for my clients. So my teachings born out of everything I've lived and experienced, and what I know works, and, and obviously, you know, as a practical person, someone that tries things and see if they works and has taught it to hundreds of people, it works. Is it easy? No. Is it a pain-free method? No. Is it a quick fix? No, it's not. But does it work if the individual puts the effort in and sticks with it? 100%. It's like it changed my life. It's changed so many um, of my clients' lives. So that's what I did. And on top of that, there were little mini fears I had that are small things but big things. Getting on trains on my own, I did that sitting in a restaurant. I couldn't do that before. I could not go in a restaurant on my own, order food. I was too nervous around people. I couldn't do it. I couldn't speak to waiters, waitresses. I couldn't relax in my own body. And I just did all these things. And over time, I got easier. I got more relaxed. I think what gave me confidence and still does is not just the fact of being confident and addressing these anxiety problems, but knowing that if I feel anxiety around people or a situation, I can handle it because I've done it so many times. So being a, being a good manager of anxiety gave me a great feeling, a, a great feeling. I can't really find the words right now. So it was all a shaping in process and I grew more, I got more braver each time. So it's almost like daring yourself to do things that are um, courageous. But at the start of my journey, if someone would have said to me, I want you to do all these things, I would have probably had a panic attack and had a breakdown because it, it would have been overwhelming. So everything was gradually, and I will say to my clients, you're never going to believe that this one step you're taking today on the coaching program is going to lead you to where, where you're going to get to. You never, you never really believe it until you're there. And Les Brown said that. He said you've got greatness in you. You've got the ability to change people's lives to anyone listening. And he said, you're not going to believe me right now because you've got a negative in a conversation that's not going to agree with that. And it's very powerful. But if you work at motivation, which I did, and I kept listening to Les Brown, I didn't just hear one tape, get inspired. I kept playing his music, you know, when I was on my own. So it's, um, I'm just, I'm proud of myself for that I, I was able to get through it and, and do all these things and to help other people. So that's why when my client asked me to do this video, I was like, oh, it'd be a pleasure to do it. Especially that you're asking me to do it and it's gonna help people. And you guys can probably sense and tell it's like a, not that I need therapy now, because I've done a lot of therapy and I feel I'm in a good place, but it's therapeutic to get these things out. It feels great. 
I can be myself even, even more and at the benefit of helping a lot of people who appreciate it. So anyone can do it because I'm just a normal person, whatever normal is today, but not better than anyone, but not below anyone. You can do it. You can do this 100%. You can do what I've done. You can change your life in all these different areas, your financial life, anything, fitness, people. So yeah, that momentum, that consistency just kept giving me strength. Um, but I'll say it again, it was hard at certain points. It was really challenging, but I'm glad it was. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have the appreciation and the life lessons and the things that came. So that's how I did it. Um, and I'm just sort of reflecting on the second part of the question when you said, what was the most effective thing you did? And it was, it was doing everything, you know, together and bouncing back. So, you know, I drew a pie, a pie chart the other day for my client. It was like, you know, dating, fitness, relationships, career, work on those areas. And that's what I'd done, you know. Sometimes I'd spend more time on the dating if I felt I needed to. And to get the confidence and relationships or whatever I wanted to achieve, I might go back more to the business side, your entrepreneurial, the selling, the marketing, the talks, the teaching, the videos. I love all that stuff. Then I'd spend more time coaching up and other people. So helping other people helped me as well. And that's always a wonderful thing. And that was always my dream. I always prayed on that. Please, God, get me confident and happy. Then I can be in a place to transform and help other people. Uh, that's like one of the best things. So that's it. I hope you get a lot out of this video. And I, I obviously am going to speak more on this and make more videos because there's a lot more. There's so much layers to it, but that's how I've done it. That's what worked, right, Phyllis?